When a small Finnish startup begins testing new surveillance airships just a few kilometers from the Russian border, it is more than a technological experiment. It is a signal of how rapidly the nature of aerial reconnaissance is evolving in Europe. The company Kelu, based in the city of Joensu, has introduced a new generation of lightweight hydrogen-powered airships designed for long-endurance monitoring missions, and what makes them truly notable is their resilience to electronic warfare. In an era where drones are increasingly vulnerable to jamming, spoofing, and signal denial, the emergence of a platform immune to these effects could reshape NATO's surveillance strategy across some of the most contested territories on the continent. Kelo's airships are not the massive zeppelins of the early 20th century, nor the commercial hot air balloons familiar to tourists. They are compact, aerodynamic, and engineered with clear military potential. Roughly the length of a city bus but only 2 meters wide, these vehicles can stay airborne for up to 12 hours, far beyond the endurance of most small UAVs. This combination of a narrow profile and extended flight duration makes them uniquely suitable for persistent observation roles such as border monitoring, infrastructure protection, wildfire detection, and maritime patrol. At the same time, their surprisingly low production cost allows for simultaneous deployment of multiple units without fear of catastrophic financial loss. The technology driving these craft is deceptively simple. Each airship is filled with hydrogen, a choice that solves two problems at once, it provides lift and it powers the propeller system. Unlike battery-dependent drones, Kelo's platform does not need frequent landings to recharge. This autonomy alone gives it strategic advantages, enabling operators to monitor a zone continuously through the night or to conduct slow, precise flights along sensitive borders. Carrying up to 5 kilograms of payload, the airships can host optical cameras, infrared systems, synthetic aperture radar, or specialized environmental sensors tailored for specific missions. With a top speed of about 53 km per hour, they are not designed for rapid interception but rather for calm, steady, reliable overwatch. Yet the real breakthrough is not endurance or payload flexibility, it is resilience. Kelu's engineers have been operating in a region where Russian electronic warfare regularly spills across the border, creating a natural testing ground. GNSS jamming, signal interference, and spoofing attempts are common in Finland's eastern territory, giving the company an environment that most UAV developers can only simulate in laboratories. Instead of being a challenge, this constant electronic pressure became a training field that allowed the team to refine navigation algorithms, improve control redundancy, and develop systems that remain functional even when external signals are denied entirely. The result is a surveillance tool that continues performing in an electromagnetic environment where many commercial and military drones simply fall out of the sky. As NATO members increasingly confront adversaries skilled in EW operations, this attribute alone could make Kelo's airship strategically valuable. The Alliance's innovation program, which recently contracted Kelo, is looking precisely for such resilient solutions. Modern drones, regardless of sophistication, remain wireless machines. Cut the connection and you cut the capability. If a lightweight airship continues transmitting imagery, maintaining trajectory, and performing its mission under heavy jamming, it becomes a critical asset for reconnaissance along borders with Russia, Belarus, and even in the high north, where Arctic competition is accelerating. Climate endurance further strengthens the platform's appeal. Northern Finland regularly experiences temperatures dropping to minus 26 degrees Celsius, with strong winds and heavy snow. These conditions can ground many aircraft, both manned and unmanned. Kelo designed its airships intentionally for this environment. Their envelope materials resist freezing, propulsion remains effective in dense cold air, and internal systems are insulated against battery drain and sensor malfunction. NATO's growing focus on Arctic operations makes this capability especially relevant, as surveillance in polar conditions often requires long-endurance platforms that can withstand extreme weather without putting human crews at risk. The deployment process is also straightforward. 
Images from Business Insider reveal that the airships can be inflated and prepared for flight relatively quickly, reducing logistics requirements and enabling fast repositioning. This gives commanders the flexibility to establish temporary surveillance zones in remote areas without airports, runways, or complex support infrastructure. In a world where mobility is often just as important as technology, a system that can be unpacked, flown, packed again, and transported by vehicle offers undeniable operational efficiency. Looking ahead, the company is already planning the next significant leap, multi-day missions with minimal human intervention. This evolution would transform the Kelo platform from a tactical surveillance asset into a strategic one. A persistent sensor that remains aloft for days could monitor smuggling routes, track illegal fishing, provide early wildfire detection, oversee critical energy infrastructure, or maintain constant watch along NATO's longest land border with Russia. Persistent airborne presence is something militaries have long pursued with satellites, large UAVs, and high-altitude balloons. The difference here is cost. A fleet of inexpensive autonomous airships could accomplish tasks that once required multi-million dollar assets. From a defense analysis perspective, the timing of Kelo's breakthrough is not accidental. The war in Ukraine has accelerated global demand for resilient ISR systems. Russian forces have demonstrated sophisticated EW capabilities on the battlefield, disrupting drones at every level, from small commercial quadcopters to advanced Western-supplied systems. NATO member states are acutely aware of how vulnerable their own reconnaissance platforms could be in a high-intensity conflict. Finland's integration into the alliance adds a 1,340-kilometer direct border with Russia, making surveillance around this region a critical priority. A platform designed from the ground up to operate despite Russian jamming is therefore not just useful, it is strategically aligned with NATO's evolving security architecture. Kelo's work also highlights a broader shift in modern warfare, the return of lighter-than-air technology. After decades dominated by fast jets and quadcopter drones, militaries are rediscovering the value of simple platforms that can loiter for extended periods without consuming large amounts of energy. Low-speed, low-cost, long-endurance platforms fill a gap that satellites and high-altitude UAVs cannot always cover, especially in cloudy environments contested zones, or areas requiring continuous slow-orbit observation. In many ways, these Finnish airships represent a fusion of old concepts with new materials, new algorithms, and new strategic needs. They reflect the trend toward distributed sensing, deploying many small, affordable platforms instead of relying on a few expensive ones. They embody the shift toward resilience in the face of electronic attack. And they demonstrate the power of geography as a catalyst for innovation, had the company not been located next to one of the world's most aggressive EW practitioners, it might never have developed platforms capable of operating so reliably in hostile electromagnetic conditions. For NATO, this technology is more than just another sensor platform. It is a step toward a surveillance ecosystem that remains functional even when adversaries attempt to blind it. For Finland, it is a symbol of its new role inside the alliance, a contributor of hard-earned expertise shaped by decades of living next to an unpredictable neighbor. And for the wider military tech community, it is a reminder that sometimes the most effective solutions emerge not from massive defense corporations but from small startups confronting real-world challenges on their own doorstep.